Welcome on our channel. Uh, we continue to study motivation today and uh, we have completed one part of this table. Today we will talk about cognitive abilities, uh, namely motivation uh, in past practice. Uh, we discussed uh, the process of uh, receiving and transmitting information in animals world. Uh, we have seen how animals communicate uh, uh, and these signals convey information. Uh, we also learned that most non-human spices communicate about a very limited set of things revolving mainly around predators, around food, sex, and information an animal receives is a stimulus and the stimulus to action. That is uh, a goal. Goal has a period and a decision need to be made how to achieve this goal. The stimulus lead to a response that is we have a task to solve and animals have a task to solve this problem and we must think about how to solve it. The problem must be important as a as a way it can just be ignored and uh, there are not Im unimportant problems in an animal world. The search uh, for food, uh, water, protection from the predator or the issue to reproductive uh, function is always very important. And they motivate certain behaviors, so the term or often used to refer stimulus response relationship is the motivation. Uh, we also discussed about motivation um, and uh, we uh, today we will, uh, there is a special special goal uh, for today practice and this uh, unit's everything everything. Uh, unites emotion, communication and motivation. Uh, in a behavioral context, the input is internal and external stimuli and the output, the behavioral response and all that we discussed in the previous practice in, uh, is all external factors, uh, external factors like a signal from the verbal and no verbal communication and uh, today we will discuss all together with the external and internal factors, uh, signals from the environment. Uh, internal factors include the organism itself, which are aimed uh, at maintaining homeostasis, hormonal balance, genetic factors even, and uh, instincts. And here we see this small where uh, all these incentives uh, can motivate a quick response, like a quick problem solving, or prolonging the response, uh, even some months, not very quickly. Over time, several conceptual models, here we see this, several conceptual models have been developed uh, and describing how motivation system can influence animal behavior, and here we see this, some theories uh, and it's even you see these names uh, which we uh, discuss and to which we know uh, and uh, this models includes various aspects of behavioral such as attitudes feedbacks mechanism and the role of internal and external factors and in fact there are much more theories of motivation all of them are aimed uh, at explaining motivation in humans. We will highlight only some of them, those that can be applied to animals. And here you see the names of already know that these theories are based on, you have already discussed these theories. Here we see the Banduras and Skinner's theory, and on the previous we have uh, in uh, Lawrence theory, but here just some of them. I, I take it for describing the motivation in animals. Instincts theory, you know, explains behavioral 
behaviors of animals, uh, drive reduction theory, explain action to meet biological and physiological needs, incentive theory, it explains that uh, we way to things to obtain external rewards, and cognitive theory explains that uh, we way do things to satisfy personal beliefs of, or to meet personal goals. And here we see the first one, this is the first theory that explains everything, instinctive and instincts we have already discussed, so I will not do, do on this stop just long time. Instinctive motivation is a complex behavioral that is automatic and uh, uh, and occurs in all members of the spices, such as material, behavioral, uh, maternal behavioral instincts account for few of any behaviorals, and even in humans too. And uh, uh, Lawrence, you know, that find like uh, one kind of uh, this uh, instinctive behavioral imprinting. Um, it's just a first moving object uh, uh, which uh, the animals uh, can see just imprinting uh, his brain its brain and just uh, it's uh, think like it his mother its mother for uh, second one drive reduction theory the body maintains homeostasis equilibrium in the system all system in a body it's, uh, it's it's just equilibrium state Departure from homeostasis produce an aroused condition or drive impelling the individual to engage in appropriate action and I choose an example that is related to maintaining a balance of temperature because it's more difficult than just drinking water uh, when uh, the osmotic balance in the body has shift. Uh, you, you, know that some animals are able to maintain the body temperature at all uh, relatively constant wearing uh, endometric uh, while others cannot to do this this and depend on the temperature of the environment ectothermic uh, so it's very difficult and uh, it's uh, do their behavioral uh, absolutely different so this animal must to do something with the temperature around to the body uh, uh, humans can just live in different temperature rate for example here we can, <laughs> this will control their behavioral and any or, or fly in general endothermic animals in the cold season will save resources build up food uh, accumulate fat and energy or just like this cat they will try to find a human warm house to live in and just be very very fat uh, exothermic animals will go a completely different way they will enter hibernation like this frog in just a cold state uh, uh, like this frozen frog and wait to spring and summer and high temperature uh, another example is lions lions strong animals and hunt in uh, coordinated groups uh, however they are less ha hardy than for example cheetahs in the later uh, 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 for example, even for if we just uh, compare lions and hyenas, in the latter the heart is one percent of the total body weight, uh, of the total body weight, and while in lions uh, it is from um, about half of this uh, number in males and. Uh, in females the same. This is the largest of the living cats. Uh, the weight of some males can be about 200 uh, kilos. The lions can not only run just for a short distance and must be close to their prey when attached. Att attacked. Uh, this is not a cheetah's. Its weight from 4 
40, 40, 65 kilos, and it has a completely different body building. Yes, it's very hard cat. It's easy. He's fast and light. Uh, also, it's not a marathon runner, uh, but he can afford to hunt alone. Lions use factors that help to uh, attack uh, the animals, uh, in particular they hunt in the night time. In most cases several lions uh, surround um, the animal uh, from different sites. Lions hunt on uh, every two or three days but may not eat for weeks. Uh, here we see some more important details. Choice of prey size. If you have a company or friends, uh, there should be a lot of food, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the animal must be big size, mainly. Uh, and the, uh, the general statistics collected during various studies uh, show it that lions feed on mammals weight from 200 uh, and even 500 kilos. Cheetahs are um, diurnal predators. They hunt mainly on a daytime uh, and medium-sized animals like uh, hazelas impalas uh, and calves uh, as well as hares and 87 uh, percent of prey of a cheetahs is a thompson gazelle and the weight of this gazelle about 20 35 kilos uh, the weight uh, in addition as long as there is not need for uh, um, energy and there is not feeling a hunger, a lion does not have aggressive towards the victim. Absolutely heavy scissors don't want to eat. The lion pests very close to hurt, uh, hurt uh, but they all but look calm and uh, all animals calm uh, without any stress and uh, and sensitive theory, a thing that motivate uh, our encourages one to do something. For people, this is a prize. Money motivates very well, of course. With animals, we use their favorite food as a reward. But sometimes uh, the competition itself becomes a motif. I think you remember this video, the animal feels emotion that are themselves motivation uh, and uh, it's a very cool video, I, I think you remember. It's, uh, let's try to remember what we have um, here, this is this article and uh, links to this article about emotion in animal competition contents uh, and uh, Let's try to remember the physiology. Uh, we already know the brain structure that are involved in the formation of such behavioral motivation. Uh, and here was this hypothalamus and uh, this part of the brain, uh, thalamic area, and uh, with this emotional feedback it's good and high uh, uh, aerosol and low and uh, we just can use the play with the animals and here the feel the good emotion it's very important and i will leave the links um, about the encephalon part in our course of physiology and here we can find the emotional aspects of behavioral and all areas in the brain uh, which are connected with it have the details in the links below and here let's now move uh, on to the cognitive group of theories of motivation and here we see the extrinsic theory and intrinsic theory of motivation and here we see the biological needs 
and we will discuss about these biological needs and of course we have not only biological and social needs too and what we have what we have here biological needs it's uh, physiological needs here we see the food water sleep and even uh, if we have the pain we have stress and to, uh, we stay together, we help to each other, like a social needs and even achievement motif, a relative motif. It's always uh, in all uh, animals too. And here we see this uh, two one um, theories of motivation, like uh, uh, content theories of motivation. Here we can find the thumb several theories of need. I choose three as example and uh, we will start from the Maslow theory. Uh, at first it is Maslow theory of needs and uh, then uh, all these theories connected with each other. All this is depicted as a pyramid and this pyramid uh, was built for a person t taking into account his needs but we can also say that uh, the more developed the elements of the higher nerve system the animals uh, is able to rise high in the levels of this pyramid and here we see this kind of muscle hierarchy of needs uh, uh, it's interesting that for animals, for animals is all uh, acceptable table. It's uh, especially well manifested in the primates. Or here is an example of a lion pride. And uh, I also found a lot of interesting things in this uh, article. Here I just leave the links as usual i will leave uh, here is an example in the needs of dogs this is uh, what i called the hierarchy of needs of dogs and even here we see this um hierarchy and i take this uh, pyramid uh, pay attention this is even a trademark <laughs> I will go even uh, further, let's, uh, let's take into account uh, that according to the um, elder theory, the animals uh, has more than one need and according to the my clan theory, everything can depend uh, um, on the water or, or of the animal and even the breed. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is times uh, will in seen on example dogs. Uh, I take the dog for example, and some need to run. For example, like to run and uh, while other want to just dig the ground and. Uh, uh, here we see some breeds which like to dig and I I will uh, leave the links to the site, it's very interesting. Uh, while all dog breeds have some instincts to dig and uh, many sketch uh, our dig at the floor, carpet or bed as he looks for the perfect spot here is not doubt that some dogs like they're digging a little more seriously than other and however we should keep in mind that if a dog has digging gains in many cases we humans developed that natural trait to serve our purpose uh, it's not the dog fight uh, how to, uh, our objectives have changed this needs must be taken into account uh, if you want to get a dog. I found a good side that can help in choosing all breeds already have a description uh, of their needs, energy level or friendliness and you can find the friend in this side. It's very interesting and of course I will leave to to, uh, I will leave to link to this site and here we are, um, 
retrieve the plane of our further work. The next practical we will consider the levels of this pyramid. We will start from the top of, uh, and to go down to the bottom. Uh, why this way? Why did I choose this direction? The reason is in a number of animals. As we have already said, not all animals on the planet are able to reach the top of this pyramid uh, in their needs. I want to note that this can also be said about people too. And I am kidding about this perform also it must be said that smells have a very important a uh, very important uh, role uh, have a very important role in the life of animals the pheromones of the leader uh, the one who is at the top of the pyramid and the hierarchy of the pack uh, the ladder of the pack uh, and here alpha male pheromones like it, uh, the top person on the top of this pyramid it, you just can find this article being an alpha male is not easy it takes a lot of energy and here i will leave the link to this uh, book very interesting it's take action and it's take energy and just be a alpha male it's just um, temporarily of course and not only male can be the leader of the group not only males become leaders life as uh, a male hyena is not just a laughing matter because uh, also spotted hyenas society is um, most social of all uh, carnivores uh, it is also matriarchal the leader of the group it is the uh, females uh, dominate the males as you see and if you want to know more just to go to the link this i will leave as usual and group living is also highly competitive competitive not cooperative with feeding and mating rights being given exclusively to those who can overpower their counterparts and find out why females are in charge of the complex social system of uh, hyenas. Many to do pretended to be the leader in the park and we will see this on the example of the dogs. Even if you have a dog, uh, to some being a good dog means uh, meeting that the park leader says and executing a command uh, on cue and yeah this is a good dog in action most dogs have an innate desire to play their pack leader so the desire is more evident in some dogs and some breeds than other and dogs are social pack uh, animals genetically programmed to group life where uh, every park member has a place and a role in each group there is a leader uh, or a leader pack and everyone else in the group has a rank below them below so this is a very important in a, in the dog owner relationship you probably notice it that the dog especially male choose who to obey in the family yes it has one leader as a rule it's uh, usually man the rest of the several members of the family her understanding will either be equal to her or even lower in rank and um, if you want to know more about the role of leadership in dog training here we see these two links and uh, here how to show a dog you are the pack leader it's very important in a, in a relationship uh, between the owner and dog 
and let's go so we have a very important dog training questions especially if you are a female owner of a male dog and i'm not kidding in the understanding of the dog the female cannot be alpha so i i give some useful articles so you see this uh, this one and in next practical we will discuss about this more um, you know about packs of wolves, uh, murders of crows and colonies of uh, different uh, a animals, even ants. But that is a group of cats called, here we see clouder. No, it's not a pride like lions, but um, it's a group of cats can be, these cats can be together and while these storms might make you picture both clump uh, told them it actually shares origins with other words you know you know about packs of wolves murders and uh, you will know about cats clouder if you go to the link and it's very interesting how these animals live together uh, usually we know that uh, these animals like to be alone but uh, they live in a group uh, we go down and level here we see this is a level of social social needs uh, and here we see the cats are typically solitary solitary and depends on the owner sometimes mm, the grouping is mainly for protection and social bonding sometimes cats will be even lend a helping hand nursery and kittens that are not uh, their own in order to keep them alive in the example of cats and dogs, though, we see an interesting facts of the formation of a pack of individuals of their own spices or the formation of a pack where the person will be the undisputed leader uh, and uh, they live together and yes, many animals, many animals have become domesticated and even here we see these pyramids uh, uh, for humans and for animals too. Uh, it is the protection of availability of food that a person gives that have become factors in the domestication of animals. But we will talk about this later, a little bit later, next time. And I want to focus on keeping animals in uh, captivity, namely those that need society. Some animals, you know, this um, kill a while. Uh, this animal is very smart. Uh, and at last, this uh, Kiska, uh, last living killer while at the Maryland Marine Park. Uh, was being dubbed the word learn last or after it was uh, revealed that she was spent about 10 years of her life alone in this very very small tank uh, with little to no uh, stimulation and uh, you know this this kind of animals uh, such as uh, dolphins and uh, uh, the most intelligent animals in the world they are social creatures that uh, require a lot of interaction and stimulation which you choose rather in captivity unfortunately don't receive enough of in one extreme case and lonely orca that has spent most of her life in captivity and the last decade completely alone in a, this little tank in Canada it's uh, and this is not the only case not the only case in this case in, in general it is the uh, camel it is a uh, Harilas Ivan I just leave the link you just can to write the article 
It's a royal gorilla lived in the zoo Atlanta and absolutely alone. Uh, absolutely alone. You know, people are also social animals. And one of the most terrible the source uh, punishments that we use to deprivation of communication with our own kind. This is just a solitary confidement. Uh, but in relationship, relation to animals that are not c criminals, this is uh, certainly an extreme measure of cruelty. I want you to watch a short, short about um, sh short story about this life, his life, this uh, harillas, and that's why I am actually against such keeping of animals. So, plaitops uh, are solitary animals for most of their lives. Uh, also, they can sometimes be seen in pairs, mothers on the stay with their young for a few months. Uh, These uh, animals absolutely like be alone. Uh, some animals mm, not uh, form some groups absolutely, and you know some animals prefer be alone. For example, leopards, koalas. Uh, lionfish even in the sea but as usual the animals like to be together such uh, do you remember even uh, Abraham Maslow's uh, this pyramid it was in the middle part of the, our practical uh, there was a question for which we will look for answers next time why do some animals choose society and sometimes human society while others prefer uh, be alone uh, we will go to uh, go down on the level uh, and uh, talk about safety uh, stress and safety and the positive and negative aspects of such of lives and uh, uh, for example we um, move down on the uh, basic level where we talk about how the animals uh, use the group formation for find the food water and even uh, for sleep in a calm situation area so as usual I use some links I leave it uh, in description to the video and uh, your homework in uh, book animal behavior you should read the some pages in a chapter for uh, decision making and motivation so see you later bye bye